Okay, I want to thank everyone for uh, coming out uh, this morning. Um, my name is Assemblyman James Gallagher, and I represent the 3rd Assembly District. Uh, and today we wanted to uh, get out some information to the general public um, as we are, as a community up here, the community of Paradise, uh, Concow, Megalia, Yankee Hill, Cherokee, as we're seeking to recover and rebuild in the wake of this devastating campfire, um, there's some important deadlines that are coming up. Um, that are key for the for the community to understand and we want to help ensure that we're getting out the word um, and that we're meeting these steps so that we can get back up here and 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 rebuild and and move on with our lives as best as possible um, you know there's still a lot of shock um, as as you can imagine uh, and you've heard some of the stories, uh, people fleeing for their lives, fire on both sides. It was pure hell um, in this community as people were trying to escape. And so there's still a lot of shock of people, you know, uh, trying to deal with that situation um, and also figure out what are the next steps forward. So we kind of have to keep getting this information out um, to really make sure that the public knows that and, that and that together there's a lot of resources available uh, that are coming on board from the federal from the federal level, the state level, uh, you know where I'm at, and all all the way on down to the local level, um, to help people get back uh, get back up and running. And so we want to we want to be helpful with that. Um, and so one of the very first steps that has to be done in order for us to rebuild um, is we need to remove the massive amounts of debris. Uh, that is in the Paradise community and, and the surrounding communities. Uh, it is the largest uh, debris cleanup post-fire in California history. Um, so this is going to be a huge monumental task. Um, it's going to take a lot of work to get there, but in order for us to rebuild, we've got to get that removed. Um, and what we want to let people know is that there is a deadline for signing up for uh, the government-sponsored debris removal. Uh, program and that deadline as you'll see right here behind me is January 31st and we really want to encourage the community um, you know to sign up for that program and the way to do that is you have to sign off on what is called a right of entry form that right of entry form you know has to be received by January 31st um, now on this program there's no cost up front uh, to you to do that uh, Cal OES is uh, bidding out the, uh, the contract for that and there will be a very large effort that will be coming in and doing the de debris removal in a very efficient and consistent way throughout the communities. Now I know the first thing because you know I got into government because I didn't like where things were going and and I very often am very skeptical um, of government. Um, you know I, I took my community through the Oroville Dam incident and there's a lot of people who, uh, you know, in this area who I know, you know, say, man, what's going on with this government program? People don't trust government. Um, and I know there's instances where we have good reason not to trust government. Um, but this program, and I've talked to many other of my colleagues who've gone through other wildfire disasters, has been very effective at getting the debris removed efficiently and also to ensure that you have a certificate at the end of it that says you can rebuild, that the hazardous material has been properly removed so you have a buildable lot so that you can go back up and, and begin the building process. And for those of us who are saying we want to move forward, we want to get Paradise rebuilt, that's really important that we do that. Um, and we want to get this process moving in a very efficient manner so that we don't have you know, piles of, of rubble that are left behind and not dealt with and maybe subject to an abandonment process down the road, we want to have an efficient process so that everybody's coming up in here and we are rebuilding uh, together. And so in order to do that, we need to really make sure that this, this program gets off the ground, and that's why it's important for people to sign up for it. Um, again, that deadline is going to be January 31st, um, and so we really want to help get that message out. This is that first step. A lot of things we're going to have to go through. And what I want to, I think what you know and what I want to reiterate again today is that my office and so many others uh, from Congressman LaMalfa at the federal level, Senator Nielsen with me, 
your local officials who are with us today, Mayor Jody Jones, uh, Supervisor Doug Teeter, we are going to be with you through this process, you know, um, and we want to make sure that we get through these steps together, but there's a lot that needs to be done. Step one, let's get this debris removed so that we can begin the process of rebuilding. Um, and so we really want to encourage people to sign up, uh, get that right of entry form uh, signed and executed and turned in so that we can begin the rebuild process together. And with that, I will uh, turn it over to uh, our director of uh, the governor's office of Cal uh, OES, Office of Emergency Services, Director Mark Gillarducci. Thanks, Assemblymember and Madam Mayor and Supervisor, happy to be with you today. Um, you know, I really, it's hard to add uh, anything to what uh, Assemblyman Gallagher described to you, except this. We have had to manage wildfires all throughout California over the course of the last many years. Uh, this program that we're talking about to come in to do debris clearance is, is a 12-year program with a very, very positive track record and history. And I can tell you from managing many disasters throughout California and actually across the country in my tenure, the fastest, most effective way to get a community back up online, the fastest, most effective way to get economic recovery started is with a very rapid effort to remove the debris uh, and the hazardous materials that are in the way. And, um, you know, we have already begun just really 30 days after uh, the beginning of the first phase of the household hazardous waste cleanup, where we've had crews up here uh, from the Department of Toxic Substance Control, from the US EPA. Uh, they've already cleared close to 7,000 lots. They're, they're roughly 50% of the way through where we're at and um, have really uh, been, we, 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 we honestly believe we will exceed the metric that we've set forth. And that is because it's been done in a very effective and efficient manner and in close coordination with local authorities. Um, we know, uh, you know, we're just coming out of uh, uh, cleanup operations in the car fire in Shasta County. Um, and um, that was right on the heels of uh, the fires in the North Bay uh, in 2017. And in, in, interestingly enough, um, the, the debris was removed significantly and very rapidly in the North Bay. Uh, it allowed the city of Santa Rosa and, and the local areas to start to rebuild faster. In fact, Coffee Park is close to being 60% built out at this point. And this is a very significant move because it allows for um, building materials to be maximized, contractors to be maximized, builders to be maximized, and it allows us to, to leverage all of the state, federal, and private sector resources, whether it's, whether it's physical resources or it is financial resources, to bring them in in an effective way uh, uh, to be able to get the community rebuilt. There's nothing more than we want than to work and, and work closely with the town of Paradise and Butte County to get this community rebuilt. So um, uh, in the second phase of the debris removal uh, requires that uh, individuals sign a, a right of entry form for these contractors to come in and um, remove the debris from their property. And I, I, I can't encourage you enough and the importance of this to get uh, the right of entry form um, signed, participate in the government program uh, the, 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 the lot will be cleared uh, and it will be addressed in a very respectful manner. Um, the lot will then be certified at the end of the cleanup and it will be, it will be turnkey and ready to be rebuilt on. Okay. Uh, the 31st of January is the, the deadline that we've set and that is because we are rapidly bringing on uh, and, and going out and reaching out to bring on uh, contractors uh, heavy equipment uh, debris haulers and others that are experienced in being able to manage and, and this volume of debris. And Assemblymember Gallagher is correct. This is now the largest debris operation that we have had to deal with in the state. But we are, we are really 
uh, uh, gaining and leveraging all of that experience that we have. Um, and uh, through our partners at CalRecycle, which is the, going to be the lead organization uh, with a, a unified incident management team uh, led by Cal OES and uh, a number and, and our partners at FEMA, uh, we will be working uh, to, um, to rapidly move, move the debris. So with that, I just want to, to uh, reinforce and reiterate really uh, the, the great partnership uh, you know, I, I really do, I, I can just tell you from very, very uh, extensive experience that getting, getting this debris cleared is the number one priority at this point so we can get the, the, the community rebuilt. And uh, effective and efficient manner is getting all the resources, those heavy equipment operators, those teams in here, get them through once, get the community ready to go, and it, it turn, make it turnkey for, for rebuilding. So with that, I think... Um, are we going to turn it over to the supervisor, uh, if you'd like to come up? Yeah, thanks. Hi, Supervisor Doug Teeter, District 5, includes Paradise, Megalia. Um, also want to point out <clears throat> unincorporated areas were affected by this fire of Concow, Butte Creek Canyon. So uh, I did a poll, uh, for what it's worth, on uh, Paradise, Megalia, Rants, and Raves. Uh, almost 60% said they're using the state program. I also asked if you're undecided why. Uh, one was, uh, are you waiting for a quote from a private contractor? And then the other is, I, uh, I'm undecided because I need more information. And then uh, the last one was, I'm undecided because I'm not sure what my insurance is going to give me as debris removal money. Uh, so on the undecided, uh, I hope they reach out. Uh, my office's number is 552-5000. Again, that's area code 530 552 5000 and we can direct you to the right uh, department that can answer your questions. Also, there's a meeting in Durham tonight on debris removal, and I'm having a meeting this Sunday at the Megalia Community Church, one to three, and I always bring staff that can answer questions uh, or help you fill out your right of entry. And also, uh, Cal OES sends a representative there as well to answer questions. So uh, if it's true that 60% are using the state program, uh, I'd like to see those numbers show, show up uh, being turned in. You know, I didn't ask the question, have you turned them in yet? So hopefully if you've made your decision, uh, get on it. Uh, as uh, it's been repeated, and I'll do it again, January 31st is the deadline. And uh, if you miss out, uh, maybe you could get a private contractor uh, there's the uh, wrong way to do cleanup, which is have the town or county have to abate your property, which uh, probably would be the most expensive. So I do recommend that people uh, make a decision and uh, heed, heed this deadline. So uh, look forward to rebuilding our community. And I want to thank the town, county, and all the state agencies for all their help in getting us uh, back to our homes. Hi, I'm Jody Jones, Mayor of Paradise, and I want to encourage everyone to use this program. Um, if you have questions, there is at ButteCountyRecovers.org a section and questions and answers and even videos of people asking questions and the answers to those questions. I've had all my questions answered. I've turned my forms in. So I wanted to share with you just some personal tips about um, the process and turning your forms in. Please read the form carefully because it requires certain information from you. I had to go back twice because it says it wants um, uh, copies of government ID for each person signing and I went in with my husband's signature but not a copy of his driver's license. So if you if your property's in a trust you need copies of your trust which may have burned down um, don't worry about that. You can contact your attorney and you can get a certification of trust, which they will accept. Um, so read the form. If you're concerned about your septic system, you can draw a little diagram of where your tank and your uh, leach lines are. Or if you really want specific information to give to them, the Town of Paradise Town Hall in Paradise is open Monday through Thursday from 8 to 12, and you can pick up your septic plans to attach them to the form. 
So please don't be intimidated by the form. Just read it carefully and uh, save yourself from having to go back a second time like I did. I would encourage everyone to sign up early. Don't wait for the deadline. And, um, and I also want to remind people that the same date, January 31st, is also the deadline to register with FEMA. Thank you. Okay, well, I just want to reemphasize, you know, this is the purpose today is to really let people know about the January 31st deadline. That is the deadline to sign up for the government-sponsored uh, program for debris removal. And you do that by signing and executing a right of entry form. Um, and I also want to emphasize what uh, Mayor Jones uh, just said. It's also the deadline. We, had, we, had, we got the deadline extended uh, to sign up with FEMA for relief through FEMA, uh, whether individual relief, uh, low interest loans for your business, and other, other relief that's out there. We re and even if you've been rejected or you've got some kind of rejection letter, you can reapply again, and this has been emphasized many times, and get relief through FEMA. That deadline is also January 31st. So we would encourage people, uh, you know, those deadline is it's fast approaching. It will be here before we know it. And we know that we want to recover together. We want to move this process forward. We want to rebuild paradise and the communities of, of Butte County that have been devastated uh, by this campfire. Uh, and so with that, I'll answer any questions that people might have at this time. We also have representatives from Cal OES and FEMA. Uh, Eric Lamoureux, I'll point out, who's, who's been heading up a lot of the de debris removal uh, program and can answer pretty much any and all questions. And Kevin Hannes from FEMA as well, who can answer other questions on the FEMA side. So any questions at this time? Uh, are there any, uh, Go ahead. Are there any incentives um, uh, monetary-wise for folks who sign up through the government-sponsored program? Um, I'll let s some folks speak to that. I don't know that there's any monetary incentive in that sense. Uh, what, what it what it does do is you do not have to pay any money up front. Um, you know, the program will come in, they'll do the debris removal. The only thing that may happen is they may come after insurance proceeds for de debris removal later. However, if you've used your insurance proceeds, uh, your debris removal insurance proceeds to clean up the rest of your property, um, whether it's trees or other things, impediments, because this is just going to take care of the, uh, the house uh, footprint um, and you have no no insurance proceeds left after doing that there will be no collection on that and so it is essentially free in that in that sense but I'll let Eric maybe answer that a little bit more fully so with the state's program we're only going to be looking to collect what's in your insurance policy specifically for debris if you choose to do it yourself you're going to be on the hook for hundred percent of those costs so more than likely if you do it yourself you're going to have more control over the timing of the cleanup but it's going to end up costing you more okay because there have been just rumors that we've heard where uh, people survivors have been approached where it's like oh if you can get all your neighbors to sign up for the the program then will be used into a cutback or something like that is that true what we will do, one of the main, one of the primary uh, priorities for us on cleanup is looking to clean up those areas where we have concentrations of right of entry forms. So those neighborhoods that are able to sign up by January 31st, give us their ROE, those neighborhoods will certainly receive some priority within our cleanup project. But there, there's no financial incentive. So, but there, to answer your question, there's no financial incentive on the front end or, or if there's a cluster of people, uh, some sort of a, a, f a financial kickback, there's none of that. What, but it, as the assembly member said, the program overall is, is free, and, uh, and, and there is no cost to you if you participate in it. Thank you. Um, how Rick, long, yeah. How long after the 31st do you guys anticipate being able to start phase two, and how long roughly does it take to clear a single lot? Is it a day, two days, how long is it? So we will have contractors on board toward the end of this month. We are hoping on January 28th to begin our cleanup operations. 
Uh, generally, it takes about two to three days to get through a parcel, sometimes a little bit less if it's a smaller parcel. Our hope is that by the uh, first week of February, uh, first to second week of February, we're going to see some of our first sites cleaned. Uh, so we will have several hundred crews at any given time working throughout Paradise and Butte County, uh, continually working. Uh, we will set daily, weekly metrics to ensure that at the end of the day, we're going to have all these sites cleaned up within 12 months. Risa? Well, and again, one thing I want to emphasize is we're not really talking about, you know, the private. Uh, some people are deciding to go the private contractor route. There has been information given out about um, there are certain certifications they need to have. Um, and that's there's an alternative program uh, that's being set up through Butte County, correct, that they go through. Um, we're just really emphasizing this is what the government program does and we're encouraging people to sign up. You know, if you decide to go that route and we think it's a good route to go. The deadline is January 31st, so that's why you know we want to get that information out about, uh, and then people will decide, you know what, uh, which way they're going to go. Um, but I think probably the biggest difference is just that there is no upfront payment uh, for the government-sponsored program. Uh, they may come for insurance proceeds later, um, uh, but again, if those have been depleted because of other debris cleanup, then there really is no cost. Uh, I just, uh, let, me, let me just add one yeah. thing that to be clear on the insurance proceeds if your insurance um, if your insurance that you have has a, um, a a rider or designator for debris that's that's what we would go back in to seek and again as the seven member said if the if that if you haven't used those proceeds for other not not part of the, the program to do debris removal from your property um, uh, then, you know, we wouldn't go in and, 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 and seek that in return. But, you know, as any government, we're putting government funding and efforts uh, forward, if, if there is a recovery of some funds, and again, only in those riders, they would do that. Otherwise, there would be no recovery. And we don't touch your overall insurance for, um, for what you have for your home, et cetera, okay? But one other thing, on the differences, big differences, the government program is free to you. A contractor is not and um, there is going to be a very limited amount of available heavy equipment and contracting uh, that can rapidly get in and move uh, the debris out because the we're going to be bringing on almost everybody that's available and in this size of a debris operation we're going to be getting resources from from all over uh, California so it's going to be a pretty significant effort are these funds certified or they're going to be affected for the government shutdown um, are the, uh, sorry, I didn't catch the first the part. Fund, the fund for the people is already certified the money, or it's going to be affected in some way for the government shutdown? The, the government shutdown will have no effect on this. And th this is a state program, and the state of California is, uh, is, is leading it. And, uh, um, you know, the governor has already made funds available, and we're, that, that will have no effect whatsoever. So I don't know specifically those particular cases you cite. However, but let me say that when we come in and do a lot cleaning, that that lot is cleaned and the soil is tested and uh, it's coordinated with the the building official and it's rendered um, uh, certified uh, to begin to rebuild. Now there's a difference. We, we don't come in uh, and the government doesn't come in and. Uh, if we remove the, and we remove a little layer of, uh, of soil because m typically that soil is contaminated. Um, and, uh, and, and then what, what the homeowner needs to do is bring back the soil that's, that's necessary to re refill and, and have that soil engineered to be able to build on. We do not do the compaction and we do not do the engineering. What we do is we do the debris clearance and, and that is the extent of the program that we do. So there, there may be some uh, individuals that have had their debris cleared in other fires that uh, didn't necessarily understand that part and they've, they've said, well, look, the, we didn't have uh, an engineered lot. 
that the engineering comes on the on the part of the homeowner, and that's part of what the, their insurance proceeds, et cetera, should be used for. I think she was next. Well, uh, you know, look, the, these, this program has to be um, as, uh, you know, it, I think you as a homeowner will want the most, most uh, um, certified, qualified, and, and, and secure um, uh, entity coming on your property and doing the work. And so part of the, the government's program, and I will say, uh, our, our effort is to hire as many sub contractor locals as we possibly can. And so that's something that can be uh, negotiated and worked with the prime contractor. Uh, we leave that to the prime contractor to do. But on balance, we also, as, as the mayor mentioned, requiring certain kinds of identification, we want to make sure that, um, that, the, that, that um, we are as sensitive and secure uh, with security, et cetera, about the people working on and around your lot. So um, it's not that we wouldn't necessarily push them out, it's that they would need to come and work as subcontractors. And, if, and, and look, at, we want as many local folks engaged in the process as possible. Well, I think one thing I would just add to that is I also understand this is <laughs> the largest debris cleanup that we've seen in California history. This is going to be a huge monumental task. It is going to take private contractors as well as those who are being contracted under uh, this program to get this job done. So there's going to be a lot of work for everyone. I've talked to the director and he has committed uh, to ensuring that we get as many local people working under the contract as well through subcontracts. So let's be clear, there's going to be a lot of local work on this project um, and, we are, and we're all in this together. We want to make sure that this job gets done so that we as a community can rebuild. Um, and so we're going to be working through all those you know, nobody's saying this is just going to be, everything's going to be perfect. There's going to be th issues as we move down the road. Um, but step one is getting these properties cleared so that we can begin the rebuild process. Yeah, Rick. How long after a lot is cleared and it's tagged do we see lots being built? Is it, is it a week, two weeks? How long between the time you guys come and say it's, it's designated and they take their home to the town? How long in that period do we see homes being built? What's been your experience? Well, you know, in reality, um, you know, that this is all part of the long-term recovery that the the town of Paradise and the and the other communities uh, working with with the state and 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 the, all of the partners uh, need to come to because you know uh, there's going to be permitting uh, there's going to be there's going to be architectural designs and and etc and so uh, you know I can only say that uh, and and a big factor has to do quite frankly with available workforce so in this state already we you know as you you may know we. We have a, a limited number of people who can bend nails and build homes. And so it's very important that, you know, we're continuing to look uh, to ensure that we have as many resources as possible. That will drive a lot of speed at which uh, homes can get rebuilt. Uh, but as a measuring stick, if you look at, um, you know, 60% built out within a year of uh, the fire in, uh, in Coffee Park uh, gives you some indication uh, on where it can go. Now, some communities are different. Uh, in Lake County, they're, I think they're between about 27 and 30% and built out. And uh, I think that there's some, some uh, buildings that are already being built up in, up in Shasta. So it really depends upon um, availability of resources, how fast the community can uh, uh, do the permitting process, and what, what, they, what the community at large wants Paradise to look like um, after the fire. Those are all factors that will need to be considered. Jody. And it depends on the work that the homeowner has done. Um, during the debris removal process, you can be doing a, a number of things to get yourself ready. Desi having your home designed, um, getting a contractor on board, starting the permitting process. We can take applications for building permits. We simply cannot issue a building permit until the lot has been certified. So if you do all that stuff up front, you could start building the day after you get your certification, as soon as we could issue that b building permit. Can I really quickly get one question? Add, add, where can people get right of entry forms? Is that, are they 
being mailed or where can they get those directly? So go ahead, Eric. <clears throat> There's a number of different locations. Uh, you can get right of entry forms at any of our community meetings. So if you happen to attend tonight's community meeting in Durham, we'll have them there. The right of entry center is at 202 Mira Loma, and that's in Oroville. That's a county office in Oroville where you can get your right of entries. You can meet with staff if you've got questions about filling it out. And um, you can also turn it in there. And I believe you can also get right of entry forms at the Disaster Recovery Center, which is at the old Sears uh, location at the Chico Mall. <laughs> uh, Eric's been great to work with. I've been at a lot of disaster or a debris removal community meetings. So I want to say thank you for all your efforts. But you forgot one. Uh, for those with the internet, you can go to ButteCountyRecovers.org. Oh, right. Butte <laughs> so also ButteCountyRecovers.org. Yes, sir. I, I just like to ask: Will contaminated concrete walkways around homes and driveways, or portions thereof, be removed from the process? So our cleanup is focused on what we call the ash footprint. So that's where the, the home, the outbuilding, the garage came down. That's what we'll clean up. We generally aren't going to clean up sidewalks, patios, driveways. If there's ash or debris on those, we usually sweep that, clean that off of the, the sidewalk or patio into the ash footprint and take it away. Um, so we're primarily just going to be focused on that ash footprint and removing that contaminated ash and debris. All those other sidewalks and patios will be left behind. Paradise is just beginning the planning process for what we want our town to look like after the rebuild. It's going to be an open public process. We started it Tuesday night. Um, we'll have more details about that on the 23rd, which is the next council meeting. And the decision about where manufactured or mobile homes will be allowed has not yet been made, but will be a part of that open public process. Okay, so there is possibly the potential for those homes to be denied? Those we'll be taking public comment and then the council will make decisions after that. We're, it's a very accelerated process and we're hoping to have that planning process finished in 12 to 14 weeks. So it won't be a long time that you have to wait to get those decisions. Uh, being the county, if I may add, uh, I don't know if you can really buy mobile homes anymore. They're modular homes. They're built to a much higher standard. Uh, I actually put it down on a mobile uh, or modular. I should I use the old term. But uh, I don't foresee that modular homes will be prevented from being used in unincorporated areas. Uh, there are uh, property owners associations in unincorporated. So they may make up their own mind. But I, uh, like the mayor said, the county hasn't weighed in on land use or any planning issues. Uh, I just want to back it up and go, hey, let's get the debris removal going. And once uh, crews are out on the ground, your local governments are going to start doing those poly de policy decisions. So uh, I think insurance industry, what's insurable, is going to drive what uh, you may build on your property. So I highly recommend you talk to your insurance agent on uh, exactly what uh, they're going to insure, because I've heard some insurance companies are not going to insure modular homes. Uh, that is just one that I talked to, my particular insurance agent. Uh, but that could change. You know, Things change. Modulars are much different today. A lot of them have sprinklers. So uh, to use the term mobile, or to use like old ones that would be coming on those those old things you know might get not allowed to be on property so uh, i hope that everyone understands that this is an ongoing discussion so thank you so every property owner has a responsibility to clean up their ash and debris. The responsibility uh, can be addressed by signing up by January 31st, giving us an ROE and we'll take care of it. They have the opportunity to clean it themselves through the county program, or there'll be an abatement process that both the county and the town will go through. 
and those towns will be abated. Folks going through that abatement process are, are going to end up spending considerably more than either of the other two options. So. But next door neighbors, they can go back, no problem. Oh, I understand your question. Someone whose home wasn't lost. So our program will have a number of very stringent requirements on dust control. So we work extremely hard to keep dust down during our cleanup, uh, utilizing water on the site. Um, right now, as we begin our cleanup, there's been a lot of rain activity. So a lot of the material has already been um, uh, settled well on the site. So a lot of dust control measures. We've got air monitoring that occurs at the site and throughout what we call our haul route from the site to the uh, uh, debris, uh, uh, to the location where the debris goes. And so we take extraordinary measures to constantly monitor air quality to ensure that we are not uh, uh, getting ash and debris up into the air. So obviously every person's situation is different. Some folks are gonna react differently uh, based upon their own personal situation. Um, you know, the best guidance is uh, uh, you know, for obviously children and animals uh, around ash and debris. Uh, we'd encourage folks to, to minimize that. But we, through our cleanup effort, will make every effort to keep all the ash and debris um, out of the air. Yes, they can. All right, I think uh, we're good here. Oh, we have one back. Do we have another question? Yeah. Yes, sir. Right. So I can't speak to insurance rates and what they're going to be. That's not, you know, my bailiwick. Uh, what I will say is that actually just last year we passed legislation that requires insurance companies that they have to renew your homeowner's policy up to three years. Um, so when you come up for renewal, they have to renew you at up to three more years on your policy that you have right now. That's state law. Um, but as far as like rates and what those are going to be, I can't really speak to that today. So. And, this, and the focus of this is really just on the debris removal today, so there's no one here from Department of Insurance or anything like that. So, yeah. Yeah, all right. Well, thank you, guys. Thank you for coming out today. We appreciate you. Us, appreciate uh, helping us get the message out. Again, January 31st to sign up for this program, debris removal program, and with, uh, for FEMA assistance. Thank you.